With the 2022 NHL free agent period not too far away, I thought it was time that we put together the 2022 Ultimate Guide to the NHL Free Agents. We're going to take a look, courtesy of CapFriendly.com, at all the goalies, defense, centers, and wingers that are available to be signed by any NHL teams this offseason. We'll go through the whole list coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned today, I'm presenting to you my 2022 Ultimate Guide to NHL Free Agents. I've been doing this video uh, around this time of year for the past few years. Uh, just to kind of give you a comprehensive overview of all the players that are going to be available to be signed by yours or any other NHL team. So obviously, uh, there's lots of players available every year. So we're not going to spend a ton of time really talking about all players. Uh, but like I said, CapFriendly.com made it easy to navigate through the list here uh, they have it already on their website if you want to play around with the tool you can organize by type of contract when they expire ufa rfa what have you by position and we'll kind of go from there we'll probably spend a little bit more time talking about some of the more elite higher level players that are available but as you can see some positions have uh, you know a fair bit of uh, availability on the market that's pretty decent high-end quality and there are some that it's kind of slim picking so teams are going to have some tough decisions to make so now we're going to jump onto the computer uh, go through our list here courtesy of catfriendly.com and i'll take you by position we're going to start with the goalies through the defense to the centers to the wingers and look at what's available in each position so we're going to get started here by the goaltenders, and I have these guys ranked based on uh, their performance last year. So this is all stats-based ranking, so it doesn't mean that the top of the list is necessarily the absolute best available here. But Marc-Andre Fleury at the top, 37 years old out of Minnesota, had a solid year, played 56 games last year. We've also got Darcy Kumper uh, in Colorado, uh, you know, who's going to have a chance to play for a Stanley Cup, but he's not signed yet, so he could be available. We know Miko Koskinen and Edmonton's heading to play in Switzerland, so he's not going to be back in the NHL. You've got Thomas Grice, Martin Jones, Braden Holpe. You've got Jack Campbell, of course, who is one of the better options here. Uh, he could certainly be lumped into the top there with Flurry and Kumper for sure. Of course, Jack played in 49 games last year with a 39 or 31, sorry, nine and five record. So obviously, with all the talk about Campbell and Toronto and maybe not being able to afford him, part of the reason he's going to be able to drive a hard bargain to get. Um, more money is because of the lack of uh, uh, competition here on the market. Coming up this first slide of the top 10 goalies is also Yero Halak, Casey DeSmith in Pittsburgh, and David Riddick in Nashville. And, and I think it's fair to say um, a lot of these goalies won't be back with their original teams. Um, so there's not a lot of elite goaltending on the market this year. I would say basically Fleury, Kemper, and Campbell are your only goalies that are really, uh, at least on this slide, uh, that are capable of being a starter. There are a few other younger goalies here that will be available too uh, that we'll get to here momentarily that could have that uh, potential as well. Now our next group of goalies here includes Phoenix Copley in Washington, Colin Delia in Chicago, Malcolm Subban at Buffalo, Keith Kincaid in the Rangers organization, Scott Wedgwood with Dallas, Magnus Helberg, who came over and just played one, one game with Detroit, uh, also only signed a one-year deal, so he's up. Kevin Lankin in Chicago, Calvin Pickard in Detroit, Alex Stalock in San Jose, and Aaron Dell in Buffalo. They're all, for the most part, probably not even uh, you know NHL goalies anymore. I think Helberg might get a chance. Um, might see a possibility for a guy like Lankinen or, or Wedgwood, maybe Subban. Uh, the rest of them, to me, might not even, they won't get one-way deals, and they might not even get signed at all. This next group of goalies includes Adam Warner in Calgary, Andrew Hammond in New Jersey, Billy Husso in St. Louis. Now, the only reason Husso is so low on this list is because it, this goes by stats and cap hit, cap hit being the determining factor here. So, obviously, Billy Husso didn't make much money last year. That's the only reason he's so low. But I think he'd be fair to say between uh, Fleury and Kumper and Jack Campbell, he'd be right up next in that conversation. So, he's one of the more interesting goalies here. It is capable of being a starter, I think. Uh, we've also got Felix Sandstrom in Philly, Craig Anderson, we don't know if he's retiring or not, uh, out of Buffalo, Zane McIntyre in Minnesota, Garrett Sparks in the Kings organization, Cam Johnson in Columbus, Michael Hauser in Buffalo, and Christopher Gibson in Florida. So certainly, like I said, not a lot of elite level talent, some that are capable backups, but it's kind of thin uh, on the goalie market this free agent period. Moving on to the defense. Now, for defenders here, I have the rank by points last season. In the top of the list, we have Chris Letang in Pittsburgh and John Klingberg in Dallas. By far the two most offensively gifted D on this free agent market. 
After that, the fall off is substantial, at least offensively speaking. Uh, there are some good defenders available that are, are decent, especially top four. But by far, Latang and Klingberg will stand the best chance of getting the longer term, bigger money deals. Of course, Latang's a little older, so I would suspect, based on what we've heard, he's looking for a four or five year deal, whereas Klingberg's looking for a seven or eight. Uh, you got Ben Sherratt in Florida, another good defender, but not a lot of offense. Nick Letty in St. Louis, Anton Strahlman in Arizona, Justin Schultz in Washington, Nikita Zadorov in Calgary, Subban in New Jersey. Of course, PK is making $9 million a year now. That's going to be substantially less based on his play. Uh, you got Brett Kulak in Edmonton. Could be an excellent signing, whether it be the Oilers or somebody else that picks him up. Even a guy like Ian Cole could give you some grit and toughness on the back end. Next slide as well certainly has some defenders that are like Keith Yandel. I don't even know if he's going to play next year. He might retire. But we've also got Alex Edler in L.A., Justin Brom the Rangers, Eric Gustafson in Chicago, Yan Ruda in Tampa, uh, Bradley Hunt in Vancouver, Eric Branson in Calgary, Josh Manson in Colorado. Again, uh, a good defender. Like He's lower on the list because he was on a pretty sweet contract. Um, so he'll be one of the more interesting names to watch. Mark Stahl in Detroit. I'm not sure if he'll be back there for another season. Ilya Labushkin in Toronto, picked up from Arizona at the deadline. It was a nice fit there. Um, if they can get him for the right price, I'm sure the Leafs will attempt to keep him in the fold. But obviously, like I said, the fall off is substantial when it comes to offense. There are a few guys here that are more interesting on the defensive side of the game, though. This next slide of defenders, it continues to be a fall off for sure. Uh, you get Colin Miller in Buffalo, uh, who's normally in the past had been more offensive, so I'm not sure if he can refine that in his game or not. I mean, he is only still only turning 30 years old. Uh, Zdeno Chera, likely going to retire from what we've heard, but not confirmed yet. Mark Pissick in Buffalo. Sebastian Ajo with the Islanders. Danny DeKaiser in Detroit. Matt Benning in Nashville, Andy Green with the Islanders, who of course is also expected to retire, Chris Russell in Edmonton, Jack Johnson in Colorado, and Robert Hag in Florida. So again, as I mentioned, most of these guys at most would probably be a 6-7 on any team. Some of them I wouldn't even be shocked if they don't get signed um, or have to take a two-way contract. One more slide of defenders here. This includes Jordy Ben in Minnesota, Ollie Matta in L.A., Brendan Smith in Carolina, Calvin DeHaan in Chicago, Will Butcher in Buffalo, Michael Stone in Calgary, Andre Schuster in Anaheim, Josh Brown in Boston, and then in Montreal we've got Sammy Niku and William Lagesson. Now, some of these options are actually better than the previous slide, so as I mentioned, these ones are ranked by point totals, but at least you know with guys like Smith and DeHaan and Ben, you're going to get some grit and toughness back there, so I think they'll likely get NHL jobs on a one-way deal. Wouldn't be shocked if Michael Stone re-signs in Calgary again for a one-year cheap contract. Uh, and even a guy like Josh Brown might get a one-year deal. Will Butcher's debatable. He's kind of fallen off a lot since he's first entered the NHL. and I don't know what the future holds for him. One last group of defensemen here because there's over 50 of them. you got Andre Sekera in Dallas, Derek Pouliot in Seattle, Ryan Murray in Colorado, Matt Irwin in Washington, Nathan Beaulieu in Pittsburgh, Colton White in New Jersey, Kevin Connaughton in Philly, Troy Stetcher in L.A., Greg Pattern in Anaheim, and Noah Juleson in Vancouver. I think a few of these guys are young enough and interesting enough that they will get opportunities. I uh, wouldn't be shocked at all to see Troy Stetcher, Noah Juleson, uh, maybe Nathan Beaulieu at least get short-term deals. Um, maybe Ryan Murray. Ryan Murray's a decent defender. He just has a hard time staying healthy. So um, For the most part, though, I would suspect, like I said, some of these guys are not going to get one-way contracts or might not get signed at all. On to the center iceman, and things do get interesting here. There are some elite-level guys. Uh, again, these guys are ranked by point total, so we can see last year's performance. Nazem Kadri tops the list. Colorado Avalanche, 31 years old, coming off an 87-point season and a really team-friendly contract. be really interesting to see what happens with him. If you have Claude Giroux, and I know he plays wing as well, but these players are broken down by their primary position listed through cap-friendly which is currently still center for Giroux. Um, indications are he wants to return to Florida, but we'll have to wait and see on that. Patrice Bergeron, will he retire? Will he come back? We don't know. You've got Ryan Strom with the Rangers, Vinny Trocek in Carolina. The biggest names on the market, Evgeny Malkin in Pittsburgh. Will he go play somewhere else? It would be really weird to see him with a different uniform, or will he find a way to finish things up with the Penguins? Uh, that will be very, very interesting, along with his teammate there, Chris Letang. Of course, Nick Paul in Tampa has done himself a good job. Again, betting on himself, had a really solid playoff performance, so I'm sure he's upped his value a bit since the trade deadline, and he will get paid somewheres. Sam Gagne in Detroit, 
Uh, you got uh, Marcus Johansson in Washington and Johan Larson. So big fall off here after your top six guys uh, based on performance this year. So, uh, you know, we'll see where things go. But uh, you get some elite level guys that can be top six centers like Kadri, Drew, Bergeron, Strom, Trocek, Malkin. After that, you're looking at more of a bottom six role. Next group of centers, you get Victor Rask in Seattle, Colin Blackwell with the Leafs, Nico Sturm in Colorado, Derek Stepan in Carolina, Chris Tierney in Ottawa, Curtis Lazar in Boston, Darren Helm in Colorado, Nick Bukestad in Minnesota, sorry, and Tyler Bozak in St. Louis, and Cody Eakin in Buffalo. I think most of these guys will get contracts. I don't know about Victor Rask. I have my doubts. Uh, the rest uh, probably do get deals, but I, assuming they want to continue playing, um, but it's hard to say. I think we could see a lot of these guys possibly changing teams. That wouldn't be overly surprising at all. Continuing with the centermen here, we've got Lauren Dauphin in Montreal, Gerald Mayhew in Anaheim, Joe Thornton in Florida, Vinny Lettieri in Anaheim, Brad Richardson in Vancouver, Nola Chowry in Florida, Dakota Joshua in St. Louis, Austin Zarnick with the Islanders, Carter Rowney in Detroit, and Greg McKegg of the New York Rangers. Again, I don't know that all these guys are going to get signed. Joe Thornton may opt to retire, um, and some of these guys may have to accept two-way deals. Uh, difficult to say. I can see a guy like Achari, Zarnick, maybe Rowney or McKegg maybe getting a one-way deal. Uh, hard to say. It just These are strictly depth pieces at this point. Nothing overly elite for sure once you get past, like I said, those top six, and then you have another small group that are really good middle six, and then it falls off quickly after that. On the last group of centers here, we've got Kyle Turris in Edmonton, Riley Nash in Tampa, John Hayden in Buffalo, Nate Thompson in Philly, Logan Shaw in Ottawa, Adam Brooks in Winnipeg, Sheldon Dries in Vancouver, Cedric Paquette in Montreal, Jay Beagle in Arizona, and Brad Malone in Edmonton. Again, these are all debatable if they get contracts. I could see maybe like Nash, Hayden, Brooks maybe getting a, a two-way deal. Hard to say. Like It's really debatable. I'm not sure how much hockey a lot of these guys have left in them. And if they do get contracts, they certainly won't be guaranteed roster spots. Our first group of right-wingers. Again, these players are sorted by production last year. David Perron of the Blues tops the list with 57 points. Uh, and odds are he will stay in St. Louis. There's already reports that the uh, feeling is mutual to bring him back. Just a matter of working it out. So I think that will likely happen. So that's going to make the rest of this group a little thin. you got Phil Kessel, an aging Phil Kessel coming off the, you know, an eight-goal season. He still gets a lot of assists, though, so he can be a bit more of a playmaker. But we'll see what happens with Phil. you got Rodriguez and Raquel in Pittsburgh. And to be honest, I think their future in Pittsburgh will be largely determined by the signings or re-signings of uh, Latang and Malkin if those happen. If they do happen, that's going to eat into a lot of the money. They'll have any chance to bring these guys back. So that will play a big role. You got Riley Smith in Vegas, Frankie Vitrano in the Rangers organization, Nemestikov with Dallas, Vinny Hinestroza in Buffalo, Alex Chason in Vancouver, and Alexander Radulov in Dallas. There's already been reports about Radulov heading back to play. I believe it was in the KHL, so he likely is done in the NHL. So as I mentioned before, the fall off is substantial now. We're into the second group of wingers. You get Trevor Lewis in Calgary, Nick Delorier. He's definitely going to get a contract for sure. And Dominic Simon in Anaheim, Ryan Carpenter in Calgary, Buddy Robinson in Anaheim, Colton Seaver in Edmonton, Tyler Pitlick in Montreal, Brett Ritchie in Calgary, the real deal, James Neal, who's fallen off substantially in St. Louis. Uh, but he did play really, really well in the American Hockey League. I do wonder if he'll get one last crack at this or not. Then you get Josh Levo in Carolina, who really didn't even play a lot. So a lot of these guys are definitely depth guys, fourth liners, Maybe third liners in some cases, but some of them will definitely get contracts. This is our last group of right wingers. Uh, right now, we got Nick Merkley at the Rangers, Scott Sabrin in Ottawa, Marty Furk in LA, Kiefer Sherwood in Colorado, Josh Archibald in Edmonton, Blake Como in Dallas, Dimitri Yaskin, who made his return to the NHL under Arizona, Jesper Froden in Boston, who played only seven games last year, Stefan Nason and Curtis Gabriel, also very limited NHL action. Uh, some of these guys will get deals. A lot of them are probably going to have to be two-way deals, though, I would think. Uh, again, we're getting pretty low into the depth here. So, again, as you can see, each position really has a very limited amount of high-level performers available in free agency this year. On to the left winger. Some very interesting names. Right at the top of this list, you got Johnny Gaudreau and Philip Forsberg, two of the bigger names here in free agency. Gaudreau with a 115-point season, 
Forsberg with 42 goals and 84 points. Uh, it's debatable, to be honest. I really think that it's a 50-50 chance that either sign with their existing teams. Uh, the fact that they don't have contracts yet is telling, and it's debatable. It really, really is. So they're going to be very two interesting names to watch. Andre Burakovsky had a solid year in Colorado, but quiet playoffs. Um, be interesting to see what happens to him. He's only 27 and still very productive at times. You get Andrew Kopp. He'll definitely get paid after his playoff performance. Valerie Nishushkin as well. Uh, he certainly found his game at a later age and is going to be getting paid as well. He's also had a very solid playoff run for the Avs. Andre Pilat in Tampa. That's going to be a very interesting name to watch. I mean, I know Tampa loves Pilat. He scores a lot of big goals in the playoffs. Uh, but they're going to be tight, and they've been able to keep all their guys that are Kind of part of that core, but it'd be interesting to see what happens. Mason Marchman's a very interesting name in Florida as well. Florida's under a severe tight cap crunch, and he's been a, a resurrected his career at a later age and really found his game there. But can he stay? I don't think he can afford him. It's, it's debatable. You have Paul Stastny in Winnipeg, uh, Nino Niederreiter, and Max Domi both out of Carolina. Uh, all those players will be interesting to see what happens. No guarantee they return to their existing clubs. Now, in the second slide of left wingers at the top, we have Evander Kane. Some very interesting uh, situation there with Edmonton. It's not clear if he'll be back. He may have priced himself out of there. And we don't know the status of his contract in San Jose. Since that was terminated, he is, uh, you know, fighting that. So if he wins, that could change the whole scenario here. So we'll have to see what happens with Kane. You get Ilya Mikheyev in Toronto. Uh, I think there's interest to bring him back, but they probably can't afford him. You get Callie Yarncroke in Calgary. Matias Yanmark in Vegas. Tyler Ennis in Ottawa, Nick Cousins with Nashville, Brian Boyle in Pittsburgh, Alex Galchenyuk in Arizona, Zach Sanford in Winnipeg, and veteran Derek Broussard with the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, definitely a lot of these guys, if not most, will get signed. Boyle's debatable because of his age. Uh, same with Broussard, but the rest are definitely likely going to get a, at least a short-term deal. Next group of left wingers is topped by Louis Erickson. So you can see the point total is really falling down here. Of course, Erickson in Arizona, uh, Athanasiu in LA, Riley Sheehan in uh, Seattle. Of course, he's also a center. Uh, Andrew Cogliano, left winger in Colorado, Michael Raffle in Dallas, Jimmy VC, New Jersey, Tyler Mott, the Rangers. He's definitely going to get a decent deal. Zach Aston Reese in Anaheim, Maxon Memon in Florida, and Kevin Rooney with the Rangers. I think. Uh, definitely a handful of these guys for sure are going to get signed. But, again, we're already at a point here in the second slide of left wingers when you're getting into more bottom six and depth for players. The depth wingers continue here with Matthew Perot in Montreal, Anton Bleed in Boston, Antoine Roussel in Arizona, Ryan Dezingle, who really didn't play a lot this year in San Jose, Brendan Gauntz in Columbus, Mark Jankowski and Drake Kajula in Buffalo, A.J. Greer in New Jersey, Mackenzie McEachern in St. Louis and Andy Andreoff with the Islanders. Most of these guys, I'm not even, it's debatable to be honest. It don't even get contracts. So that is my complete ultimate guide to the 2022 list of NHL free agents. We will have another video coming out here in a little while looking at all the restricted free agents. Of course, they can't just uh, openly jump teams, but they can receive offer sheets and possibly change teams in that regard uh, or sometimes be not qualified or be traded. So it's still a very intriguing aspect of the business side of hockey as we get into the offseason here. So let me know your thoughts on where some of these players are going to end up. Give me some contract predictions. I'd love to see them and we can discuss down in the comments. If you're new to this channel, of course, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with the latest news, rumors, analysis on all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you you next time.